Hey, it's Chris Demix from Less Than Jake, and uh, we're coming back to Australia. Yeah, have like, I think it's like what nine or ten shows we're doing down there. It's a pretty pretty good amount. And hey, you're uh, not fucking around. No, we're not messing around. We're coming down with uh, with our friends, the Bennies. We're gonna take those knuckleheads uh, back out. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a party. Beautiful, Chris. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So, as you say, listen, Jake, return to Australia this October for the first time in seven years, mate. So let's get the elephant out of the room straight up. Like, why have you neglected us for so long? Oh, geez. So seven years by my account. That was, was it 2016 was the last time we were there? I guess. Well, I can't so. add up then. That's eight years. <laughs> 20, was it 2017? Somewhere around there. I think it, was, I think it might have been 20, 2017. Uh, you know, Shortly thereafter, because, you know, we, we for a while there, we were trying to get down to Australia every two to three, four years, uh, you know, tops. We try, try to get back down there for at least a festival or for our own tour or something. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, we lost about two years of the pandemic. And now here we are. So uh, it also it took took bands a minute not to make excuses. It took them out of the pandemic uh, a second to, to start traveling overseas. There was still some some overseas uh, tr travel stuff. So we're, uh, we're, we're, we're glad to be back and we hope it's not anywhere near as long next time. Uh -huh. So what's actually changed with less than Jake in those seven years, mate? You had any, any major changes or just, just business as usual? Uh, well, business as usual for the most part in terms of the band, just uh, moving forward as, as we always have uh, our original drummer, uh, Vinny stepped down in 2018 and, uh, Matt Yonker has been playing drums with us uh, since then. He appeared on uh, our last full-length record, Silver Linings, and he's on all of uh, the new three new singles that we've released uh, over this past summer. Uh, uh, well, this summer here in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're making things hard for yourself, bro. Like You're not only doing your own Hello Rock View down under tour, but you've also jumped on the Hotter Than Hell lineup as well, mate. Like You're definitely making up for lost time. We, well, we are. Yeah, we, we, you know, we try to, to hit uh, festivals and do some, some stuff on our own. We get down there and uh, sometimes, you know, beggars can't be choosers. You take what you can get. And this time, it, this time it just worked out. It's great. In fact, you know, when we initially announced the tour, there was a lot of people angry because we couldn't announce those markets because the festival. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> we were getting you know, hate <laughs> Oh yeah. And it's just throw people were saying some stuff and you, you want to jump in and, and, you know they were they they weren't being mean, but they were you know you know how Australians can get you guys can get get feisty like come on. But well, you're right because when I was doing the research on this before I saw the hotter than hell part, I saw you not playing in Brisbane, and I'm thinking like what the fuck's wrong with Brisbane? And then I read yeah. down the hotter than hell, and you're playing there, so forgiven. No, no, uh, uh, Brisneyland, Bris Vegas, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. I love it. It's one of my favorite. Uh, favorite cities. Uh, I I'll never forget walking the bridge there and seeing those bats. Yeah, you know they shit everywhere about? too. Don't, don't leave your car underneath them because they shit everywhere. <laughs> yep. So uh, good times. I remember when I was living up in Cairns years ago. There's this couple of major trees in the center of town, and the bats all nestle in that. And like I say, they shit everywhere. But you get tourists come in and they park their vans underneath that tree and leave them for a couple of days. And come yeah. back and A, they'd be covered with shit. And B, that stuff is acidic as fuck, man. Like you come back after a couple of days and it's eaten through the paint and it's yeah. so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, we'll, we'll start with the Hello Rock View part of the tour where you're going to be playing the 1998 album with the same name in full. Like, I know my arithmetic's pretty bad, but that's 27 years or so since that album's come out. Like, there's no anniversary for that. So what are you doing that album for? Well, that's funny you should say that. So the record came out in the fall of 98. So in the fall of last year, 2023, that was the 25th anniversary right. of the record. So we were playing the album uh, in the United States last year. We did a run of it. Did we do a run in England? Maybe. I can't remember. Um, and now we're bringing it uh, over to, to Australia uh, this year. So it's and the reason we justified uh, continuing the, the tour and, and still celebrating the 25-year uh, release of it is we toured Hello Rock View well into 1999. So it was like, you know, a year, <laughs> and, a, <laughs> year and a half tour. So we're, we're still playing by the rules here. I'll, I'll give you that one, bro. <laughs> but when, when you first started playing that album in full, mate, like, 
Was it a difficult thing to do? Like, I can't imagine when you wrote it back then that you ever thought you'd be playing the whole lot one day. Well, it is. It's a lot, definitely for me vocally, because, you know, I, I sang the majority of that record. Roger sang all of All My Best Friends Are Metalheads. He certainly sings a lot of backing vocals. And over the years, uh, we, we've definitely become more of a 50-50 uh, split. But but back then, uh, coming off the heels of Losing Streak, it was, you know, I was the singer. He sang some songs. He was singing tons of backups. And then, uh, so in that aspect, it's tough. We've, we've played all those songs over the years uh you know by themselves never as a whole but when we went back and 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 played all the record in secession um it's you're right you you typically when you're a young band you don't write a record and play the whole thing through <laughs> no. we, we weren't at that time so it's a cool trip down memory lane yeah how about, how about like personally going back and learning all that material from 25 years ago like does it does it take you back to that time like is it a, is it a nostalgic thing for you or is it just you've got to learn them to play them you know, with this record, again, we've played uh, each of these songs, you know, live at least once. There's some other records that we have that some songs just never translated past the rehearsal room or translated past uh, getting them recorded. And uh, so, yeah, they, 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 they're always going to conjure up memories, but um, the, the memories are, are more now from the fans and what the songs mean to them and hearing, hearing their stories. Yeah, that's, true. that's, that's what's, what keeps the songs alive. That's what keeps people clicking online to, you know, and, or, you know, being old school and, and popping the CD in or putting the record player on and, and listening to the music. Yeah. It's, this is one thing I've always wondered, mate, and I'm not sure if this actually relates to you or not, but you know, like a lot of, a lot of bands, they write really personal songs about troubles they go through in their life. Like, if you went back and had to revisit that 25 years later to do that album, like, would that bring back all those negative feelings again, like that you'd purged in the first place? Well, you know, our drummer at the time, Vinny, he wrote 99.9% .9 of the lyrics, I, I always say. You know, oh. Roger and I would arrange them. We'd come up with words and whatnot. But, you know, that was all I ever knew. I met him when I was 15. He was like 18 or 19 years old. And, you know, he would feed me these snippets of, of lyrics, sometimes full ideas, sometimes just phrases here and there. And that's all I ever knew. I've had people ask me before, you know, how, how do you sing other people's song with conviction and make it yours? You know, so to answer, you know, does it bring up bad memories? No, all the memories of those songs are all uh, very positive to me, you know, especially the writing process of it, because it was it was all happening so fast. We were so young and every day was just this adventure it was it was it was exciting um because we didn't really know what was going to happen that day except okay we're playing a show or we're getting back in the van and we got to record a new song and it it was so fast uh i always say if i could go back i i would slow down i probably wouldn't <laughs> but i i like you know i i don't i don't have regrets but if i could go back i I'd, I'd try to just slow down a little bit to savor it all because it, it went by in the in the blink of an eye yeah i can imagine and the other show that you're playing of course is the hotter than hell which features regurgitator unwritten lord jebediah and more mate like that sounds like a party bro there's some pretty cool bands there yeah i mean again you know 32 years into this journey uh to be invited to a festival in australia and have people want to interview you and talk to you. Um, you know, not many bands in this world. Think of the superstars. Think of the think of your uh, your huge bands, uh, whoever, Rolling Stones, you know, Foo Fighters, Metallica, bands that fill, fill stadiums. There's not that many of them, you know. And then think of all the millions of bands, from the band at the local pub to the band that's been trying their whole career to get a record contract. How many of those bands are out there? And then you got these floater bands like Less Than Jake, Unwritten Law. Like, you know, we might not be household names. I'm not getting mobbed when I walk down the road, but there's a thousand people in Sydney that want to see the band play. You know, it's it, it's cool. Yeah, it's got to be a buzz, bro. It's really, really got to be a good feeling. It is. It is. You know, I... I um. I have friends that are that are uber famous and, you know, like uh, imagine going to the store or to, to a show or something and, 
And, uh, we, you know, you couldn't take your kids there because you're getting harassed the whole time. People want your autograph, want to talk to you. And people think that that's, uh, you know, that's glamorous. And man, I, I, I kind of have the one foot in both worlds. I have, I have the best of both worlds. Good on you, right? And I guess the, the fans that were getting up here initially because you weren't coming to these places are going to want to know, but will you be playing Hello Rockville at the Hotter Than Hell shows as well, or is that a different set? Um, it depends. I, I, and I, we had this discussion maybe a week ago with, uh, the band, the last meeting we had, someone had brought it up. I think that we're, we're scheduled for a 45 minute or an hour top set. So if it's, if it's under an hour, we're not, we're not going to get the record in because with, with talking and stopping, uh, you know, we're, we're probably around the 55 uh, minute <laughs> mark. And, uh, but so to answer your question, yes, I don't know. Yes, I don't know. Double negative. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, less than Jake or a band, like you're universally known for your live shows, mate. Like, how much, how much practice and effort goes into them, or is it just spontaneous every night? You know, I'd like to tell you that a lot of, <laughs> a lot of planning and effort goes into it, which I, I guess ultimately it does. But you know, ninety percent of the magic happens with with the what the audience brings. You know, and uh, this is not a knock against anybody else's band or their show or their politics, but we've never brought anything but uh, fun into a live setting. We've uh, never preached to people. It's not about that. It's you leave whatever you got going on at the door and, you know, whatever in your personal life and, and you get in the venue and uh, we're going to give you an hour, hour and a half of, of our time and and we're gonna we're all gonna go somewhere together. And typically, we all go to a place of just complete insanity. It's ridiculous. We laugh at each other. We make fun of each other. Uh, all all in in good jest. And uh, rarely, rarely do I get off stage uh, and 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 think it was a bad show. And if it is, it's just the crap between my ears. You know, I I've I've grown to realize that just because I had a bad show, that doesn't mean that that anybody else did. Yeah, cool. But you, you guys don't exactly stand still, bro, especially yourself. And, like, neither of us are getting any younger. Like, how, how do you go with your body? Like, do you, do you find you have to compensate in certain bits so you don't limp off? <laughs> yes. Um, well, I, 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 I guess you call it the same thing in Australia. I, do, I go to CrossFit a couple of days a week. Nice. So I, I do that to, to stay fit. I keep my cardio up. I try. I say try uh try to eat eat a, a good diet i do better when i'm home i do terrible on the road man because i just <laughs> i like to eat like crap and uh convenient. But, yeah i work i work out like a madman i uh the other thing i do is i i to answer your question i, I stretch uh at least once if not twice a day uh i i believe that i believe that that stretching and walking uh more so than anything smoking not sleeping recreational substances uh a bad diet all that stuff yeah it's not good for you but i'm a firm believer that uh you, know, you got you got to keep moving think think about people when they get in their late 70s 80s and they you know they, they fall and break a hip because they have no yeah. no mo no mobility so um and i want to keep doing this i i enjoy playing most of the guys that i know in the business that, that have had longevity they they're uh you know uh not not too much weight on the body they're they're uh trying to keep keep the bones as uh weight free as they can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you released a single uh broken words back in june mate like is that a standalone single or is it part of the next album cycle yeah so that's a standalone si single we released uh another song called walking pipe bomb in july mm -hmm. and then uh about a week yeah about a week ago we, we released our current single uh, called not my problem so we have another single coming out in september so we're just kind of doling out uh doling out singles and and seeing how that goes you know we've we've kind of uh flopped back and forth the past couple of years we've done eps we've done singles we've uh done full length so it's kind of whatever strikes us uh at the moment and right now we just kind of want to dole them out as uh single pieces of of work yeah cool now, before we go, mate, I've got a new segment that I've introduced with our interviews. It's called Photo Bombs. So I've basically gone through the internet and found a couple of photos of you guys, and I'm going to flash them on the screen here, and you explain to us what's going on there. All right. All right. The first
first one I've got is this one. Where were you guys for that? Uh, that is on the 2016 Warp Tour uh, in the United States. I don't know what venue or what state that that is in, but I can see behind us that uh, Falling in Reverse, uh, you can see Reverse back there. They were next to us that day. Um, and uh, again, definitely know it was 2016 because we had this presidential tent that matched all of our, because that was an election year here in the right. States. You can see yeah, our trombone player wearing the tattoo there. So, 2016 Warp Tour. Right, yeah, and I got one more for you. What the hell is going on there? Ah, so that is our sax player JR and our trombone player Buddy. We would launch into a song on Warp. Again, this is on the Warp Tour. This would have been, um, I know that backdrop. That would have been 20. 2011 or 2014. Anyhow, that is a Mohawk template, that thing on the top of the kid's head. And we basically were, were trying to bring back punk rock that summer. And we said, we're going to give give free Mohawks on stage. So we were bringing <laughs> up long haired, long haired kids and Buddy would take the hair and put the, the template back and then JR would shave, shave the kid's head. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we were not great barbers. <laughs> did you did you keep a tally of how many kids you got up and shave their head? Uh, I, there was one every day. At least one kid a day would come up and we'd shave their head. So yeah, we were we were cutting mohawks all across America. I bet you many of those kids got home and the father grounded them for life because they went out with a decent haircut and came over the mohawk. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I'm sure we we weren't uh, the favorite band around uh, the household. <laughs> Oh, very good. All right, Crystal, thanks for your time, bro. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Les and Jake are here in October for their own shows. They're here for Hotter Than Hell. It's going to be a blast. I'll see you at the Brisbane show, brother, and we'll catch up and have a beer.